All right, so we're doing something a little different for this deep dive. Um, we're going to be dissecting a CV. Okay. But this isn't just any CV. Right. It belongs to Dr. Candace Chu. I've heard of her, yeah. And trust me, this one's really interesting. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's pretty impressive. I mean, just right off the bat, the sheer number of awards and keynote speaker invitations is just like, wow. For sure. Dr. Chu is obviously doing something right. Yeah, no kidding. But <sighs> like... What I'm really curious about is the story behind all of this, you know? And that's where this deep dive gets really interesting. Because anyone can list accomplishments, right? Right. But actually seeing how those accomplishments connect over time, well, that's what reveals like a pattern of dedication. You know, a real commitment to the field. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. So what specifically stood out to you when you first looked at her CV? Honestly, it was a subtle thing, but Dr. Chu's early interest in AI really struck me. Like, this wasn't some recent trend she jumped on, you know? Oh, yeah. Her work with AI, it goes way, way back, even to her student days. She's clearly been weaving this thread throughout her entire career. Wow, so she wasn't just following the crowd. This was a path she forged for herself. Now, to give our listener a bit of context, can you tell us a bit more about Dr. Chu's specific field? Absolutely. So Dr. Chu is a veterinary pathologist, which basically means she's an expert in animal diseases. Okay. And this is crucial, not just for keeping our furry friends healthy, but also for understanding how those diseases could potentially impact human health too. Oh, right. Yeah. Things zoonotic diseases, for example. Yeah. Right. Like we've seen with some uh, recent outbreaks. So she's tackling a really crucial aspect of veterinary medicine. And as you pointed out, she's been incorporating cutting edge technology like AI right from the start. Exactly, and this consistent integration of technology I think really highlights her forward thinking approach. It's like she had this vision early on yeah. and has been meticulously building upon it ever since. Now let's walk through some of those building blocks, shall we? So after earning her Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree in Taiwan, she came to the United States to pursue her PhD in veterinary pathobiology at Texas A&M University. Texas A&M, a highly regarded program. Yeah. And it looks like this is where Dr. Chu really starts to hit her stride. I mean, during her PhD, not only was she conducting research and publishing, uh -huh. she was presenting at conferences and even winning awards for her work. And not just any awards. She received the ACVP Young Investigator Award twice. That's almost unheard of, isn't it? And it is. The ACVP, or American College of Veterinary Pathologists, is like the leading organization in the field. And this award recognizes truly exceptional research early on in a pathologist's career. To win it twice, that's a clear indication of the impact she was already making. Wow. Talk about setting a high bar. Mm -hmm. And then she goes on to complete a residency in veterinary clinical pathology, also at Texas A&M. Another very prestigious program. And it's during this time that she earns her diplomat status from the American College of Veterinary Pathologists. Okay, now for those of us who aren't familiar with, you know, all the intricacies of veterinary certifications, what does that actually mean for her career? Essentially, it means she's at the top of her game. Earning diplomat status is not easy. It's a rigorous process, requiring years of additional training, passing a challenging board exam. It signifies her as a specialist, an expert among experts in the field of veterinary clinical pathology. So it's not just a title. It reflects a deep level of, of knowledge and expertise that she brings to the table. Precisely. And this dedication to excellence, I mean, it's evident throughout her career. Yeah. It really is. So we've got this, like, incredibly solid foundation, years of dedicated study, already making waves with her research. Right. And then she lands an assistant professor position at the University of Pennsylvania. UPenn's no slouch when it comes to veterinary medicine, is it? Oh, absolutely not. UPenn is top tier for sure. And I think this move to UPenn, it wasn't just about, you know, climbing the academic ladder. It was a launching pad for Dr. Chu, teaching, mentoring, running her own research lab, securing funding. She really kicks things into high gear here. Remember how we talked about her early interest in AI? This is where that through line becomes really apparent. Exactly. Yeah. At UPenn, her research starts to explore some really groundbreaking applications of AI in veterinary pathology. Like what? Give our listener a sense of what that actually looks like. Okay, so one example that really stands out is her work with canine lymphoma. She's using AI to analyze cytology samples, basically looking at cells under a microscope to diagnose this type of cancer in dogs. Wow. And if this pans out, it could completely change how quickly and accurately vets can diagnose this disease. That's huge, not just for veterinary medicine, but for pet owners who could get like faster answers mm -hmm. and potentially life-saving treatment for their dogs. It's incredible to think that this like groundbreaking research is coming from someone who's 
relatively speaking, still early in their career. Yeah, it's remarkable. It really is. And I think it's a testament to her ability to not only master, you know, traditional pathology, but also push the boundaries of what's possible with these new technologies. Well, it makes that McCabe Award she wins at UPenn even more impressive. Oh, absolutely. The McCabe Award recognizes outstanding young faculty. It's very clear that Dr. Chu's colleagues and peers were already recognizing her as a rising star. And you know what's interesting to me? All of this, the awards, the research, the teaching, it would be enough for most people, I think. But then you get to this other section of her CV, the passion projects, and it's like she flips a switch. Yes. It's where you see this whole other dimension of dedication emerge. Anyone can check the boxes and achieve success, you know, within wow. a system. But these passion projects, these are driven by something more. Right. It's like, oh, you thought I was impressive before. Hold my microscope. Uh -huh. And I'm not even sure where to start. The Vet Clinpath resident social media presence, for one, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's clear she puts a ton of effort into making veterinary clinical pathology accessible and even, dare I say, fun. And that's the thing. That's the key takeaway here. She's not just brilliant. She's committed to sharing that knowledge. The platform is informal, but the content is top notch. You know, it speaks to her passion for teaching and reaching a wider audience. Anyone who wants to learn. It's like she's single handedly making vet school cool. Well, maybe not single handedly, but she's certainly doing her part. And then there's the WID database. And I have to admit, when I first saw that, I was stumped. WYD. What does that even stand for? I bet a lot of listeners are wondering the same thing. WYD stands for What's Your Diagnosis? It's a regular feature in the Veterinary Clinical Pathology Journal, where they present challenging cases. Okay, I'm with you so far. Well, Dr. Chu took it upon herself to compile all of these cases from that WYD feature into a free, searchable online database. Talk about dedication. Who has time for that on top of everything else she's doing? I know, right? It really highlights a key aspect of her approach making knowledge accessible. These aren't just teaching tools, they're invaluable resources for veterinary professionals around the world. It really shows you she's not just focused on her own career. She's thinking about the future of veterinary medicine as a whole. And not just the future, the present too. Her outreach activities are another testament to that. Right, presenting at high schools, participating in webinars, giving talks on applying to graduate programs. It's like she has this boundless energy for inspiring the next generation of vets. And notice the focus of these activities. High schoolers, aspiring veterinarians, those considering graduate school. She's particularly drawn to mentorship and supporting those just starting their journeys, especially those from underrepresented backgrounds. It all points to this like incredibly generous spirit, this desire to like give back to her field and lift others up along the way. It's inspiring to say the least. It, it's funny, we spent all this time like unpacking all these accomplishments. This is like quite a list. It really is, but it kind of makes you wonder about the about the flip side of all that success. You yeah, know. the path not taken. Exactly. Yeah. The CV, it's like a highlight reel, right? It shows the wins, the accolades, all those publications. But what about those setbacks, the rejections, the sheer grit it takes to achieve what she has? And at such a young age, it's easy to forget that those, let's say, less glamorous moments, <laughs> yeah. they're part of any successful career, especially in a field as competitive as research. Right. Well, I think about those research grants she secured from like the AKC Canine Health Foundation, the Every Cat Health Foundation. These are huge. But for every grant awarded, I imagine there are probably like a whole bunch that didn't make the cut. Oh, absolutely. Securing research funding is incredibly competitive. It requires impeccable grant writing, a compelling case for your research, and let's be honest, a bit of luck doesn't hurt either. Totally. It makes you realize this CV doesn't just represent knowledge and expertise. Yeah. It also reflects resilience and and like sheer determination. Couldn't agree more. And and let's not overlook the sheer volume of work we're talking about here. Publications, presentations, teaching, mentorship, outreach. It's it's a staggering amount to juggle, even for the most organized person. Seriously. And all of this while while navigating the challenges of building a career in a field that's honestly still striving for gender balance. And while we don't know the specifics of her experience, of course, it's it's something to keep in mind when we consider her achievements. Absolutely. It's another layer of complexity that we can only speculate about. Yeah. Huh. Based on what we see in this CV. Yeah. But the fact that she's reached this level of success, it speaks volumes. It really does. So as we kind of wrap up this deep dive into Dr. Candace Chu's uh, remarkable career, 
I'm I'm left with a sense of awe, honestly, and a and a burning question. What's that? What comes next? I mean, the CV is incredibly impressive, but I have a feeling it's just the tip of the iceberg for someone as driven and as accomplished as Dr. Chu. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. It'll be exciting to see what groundbreaking discoveries and advancements she makes in the years to come. It really makes you wonder what groundbreaking project she's already got brewing in her lab right now. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. But for those listening, we encourage you to uh, explore further. We'll be sure to link to Dr. Chu's social media and that amazing WYD database in our show notes. It's truly inspiring to see someone so dedicated to their field and, and to sharing their passion with the world. And who knows, maybe her story will inspire you to dive a little deeper into your own passions. Because as we've seen today, even a seemingly simple document like a CV can reveal a world of dedication, resilience, and the power of a lifelong pursuit of knowledge.